Hello, happy Sunday afternoon and welcome to another live stream. <clears throat> Today I am working on a commission that is from my waitlist. So um, I'm not accepting commissions because I need to work through the ones I've already committed to. And this one I um, added to my waitlist in 2017. So I am going to hopefully get it done over this week in and around um, actual work projects. Um, and this one is, the request was Lady Death as the um, Angel of Death. So fluffy black wings, the scythe, and then just, you know, leaving it up to me as far as what kind of outfit I'm gonna put on her. So I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna work on it with you guys and Welcome, if you are um, here in Canada, happy Thanksgiving. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving here in Canada. And to everybody else, thank you so much for joining. And I'm looking forward to working on this with you. As you can see, it has already been signed by Brian Polito, the creator of Lady Death. And I am using the um, art, Bridge Your Art system. So um, in order to keep this blank from having any uh, pressure marks from my pencil, any dings from it being worked on. Um, this is the bridge. So I'm using, as you can see, it says bridge your art. I am using the commissioner bridge on the remarkable base. And I like the commissioner bridge because it's a little bigger and I can rotate from side to side. Ladle, Rupert, D-Dog, hello, welcome to the stream, Philip, how's it going? Uh, I'm sorry, you guys will be seeing my light that's right above me um, reflected here. I, I can't really seem to do anything about that, but <clears throat> I'll do my best to not have it shown that much. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just uh, loading up Twitch so that I have that, I can make sure everything is working. Um, we are trying a higher resolution upload because technically our Wi-Fi should be able to handle that, no problem, but hopefully the upload speed works nicely for you guys. We're trying to have a slightly better quality video. <laughs> Let me just get to my creator dashboard. <clears throat> Uh, yes. <laughs> Good point, Heck. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and welcome to the stream. Okay. So let me see if I can rotate this just a bit. There we go. Hopefully that'll work. Okay. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to keep working through the layout stage. This is, let me... Yeah, this is good enough. Um, so this is just my rough sketch. I actually don't super have an idea yet. Um, I don't have much of an idea yet as far as her outfit goes, but I will work on that when we get there. Right now I'm just trying to get the anatomy in the right place because body needs to be there first. It made me sign in. Okay, so weird. It was doing 1080 and looked great. Then it made me sign in to comment and it's only 720 again. Bummer. Sorry, baby. <laughs> Sheila, hello. Frozen Tundra, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the live stream. <clears throat> so, I've got her definitely looking down. Like she's really leaning back in her upper body. Um, and then she's going to have some hair coming down into her face. Um, and then the wings, um, the request was to make them big, fluffy, feathery wings or fluffy feathers. And what I'm planning to do um, is once I have the wings drawn in, the base of the wings, like the longer uh, feathers at the bottom, are going to be almost smoke-like. I'm going to try it anyway. And then I would like all the black feathers to be tipped in gold. So I get to use some of my sparkly gold paint on this and it's going to be fun. Hello, what the fan art? Welcome. Happy Sunday and happy Thanksgiving or early Thanksgiving. <laughs> so I'm just working on getting her anatomy in, hopefully getting her 
you know, I'm not uh, working on this digital, so I can't flip the image to see how it's looking. Um, and I find that that is extremely helpful. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I will uh, just, I don't know, try to look at it here on camera or something, because I that helps me see if I'm making any errors. When you're looking straight at it all the time, you kind of get this like, artist blindness where you don't notice your errors and that is something that definitely is of concern for me so i want to be careful with that now lady death has big big boobs so i don't want to accidentally make them too small which is something i do quite frequently when i'm working on lady death so i need to uh, keep an eye out for that So I've got her hand here and then you know what's really handy about scythes is that they um, <laughs> they're really they really bend all over the place so I don't have to be super worried about <clears throat> leaving room for a um, very straight uh, staff situation so that's nice but I think I don't know I it might be bending out a little further than I'd like I'm gonna keep an eye on that Matthias, hello. And then her legs will just kind of go back into the back of the page and fade out a little bit. So I just wanted to, you know, make sure I was clear on where her hip bones are, like all the, the joint connectors, make sure those are in the right place. Ulysses, hello, thank you. It's my Coffin Comics jacket. So the back has a massive comic, Coffin Comics logo, I'll show you. Yay! So I am going to try to make some decent headway through this. So if I end up getting really boring because I'm working on art, it's sort of the, the, the toss up for me every time, you know, um, I'm always, I have like a certain amount I'm trying to accomplish on the live stream, but then I'll get either too focused on accomplishing that amount or I get totally distracted and just start talking the whole time. Um, but either way, please, of course, feel free to ask me any questions if you have any art related questions or, you know, if anything. I'm also here for you. I'm not trying to um, ignore you in any way, but sometimes I do get a little uh, focused on the art. <laughs> and so just g give me a shout if I'm um, being too, too art focused or not drawing enough because that happens too. Good evening, Jeff Martin. Welcome to the stream. I heard that only Twitch partners can broadcast in 1080, regardless of their camera source. I could be mistaken. Oh, interesting. River Dragon, hello, how's it going? I'm gonna give her the, the center, um, center part. Uh, in her hair. And bring in some curls that are going to the back.
I just really want this sort of like cascade of hair going down the front of her face and kind of resting on her boobs. That just, I don't know, sounds really fun to me. <laughs> Isn't the point of your channel? Yes, technically it is, Juan. Devin, hello. Snow, welcome to the stream. Stanley, good evening. All right, so I'm gonna have her hand kind of coming around. Maybe I should bend that finger, actually. True Deadman, welcome! Happy Sunday! Kevin Draws, thank you so much for the follow. What about on Facebook? Is it, um, what's the Facebook quality like? All right, I'm gonna do a quick um, roll with my rolly eraser. Partners get priority, ah, interesting. All right, so I'm rolling my little rolly eraser because I've kind of got her body worked out now, but I've got so many scribble lines going on, I wanna um, clean them up a little bit. So I'm just lightening everything as evenly as I possibly can. And then I'll go in and start working on an outfit for her and all of that. go. Oh, thank you, Richard. This is going to be fun. I'm working on a uh, commission today. Facebook is 720 also. Bummer.
Okay, I need to think about her outfit and what I'm going to do. It's supposed to be an angel of death, Lady Death. So big black fluffy wings and I did check there is precedence already for Lady Death having wings. So I think there's been some variant covers or something like that. Um, so I'm okay as far as that goes. And um, yeah, so that's why she has the scythe and she's gonna have big black wings that are tipped in gold. And the, the woman who I'm doing this commission for liked the tipped in gold idea, so it's gonna be black and tons of gold. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. I know, isn't that so cool, Philip? Jack Stano, muscles and eyebrows must be hard to draw. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> Ciara, hello and welcome. Oh, thank you, Jordan. Yes, it seems as though the, the ship that all of our stuff is on has docked at Long Beach Port, and now we just need to wait for everything to get through the unloading process. But since we, we have no way of controlling the speed at which things are unloaded, everybody who backed a physical tier in our Kickstarter will be getting their Genesis reward book. So that's the bonus items and the bonus Genesis book and then any other uh, backer kit uh, Genesis books that you ordered. All of those have been printed, packed, and most of you should have gotten your tracking numbers already. The only books that are being that are a little bit delayed in the Genesis packages are the metal books. So metal books are outsourced to a place that specializes in printing those fancy metal covers. So those ones take a little bit longer. They usually take a week or two to get made. So those ones we're waiting on, but the book itself is printed. We're just waiting for the metal cover to put on top and then your books will be shipped out as well. So um, check your Kickstarter um, account, check your backer kit account because most of you should have a tracking number already and everything is gonna actually get picked up by the post office on Monday. Whoop, 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 whoop. Docking is a major accomplishment alone these days. I know. Oh, thank you, Finn Cross. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Freaky Deek, I love your Twitch handle. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> All right, sorry everyone, the lines are a little bit light right now, but they are going to be more visible shortly. So I just did really, in my scribbles, how I always do hair in a scribble first. This uh, little idea happened with the um, curl resting on the top of her boob and I liked it so much, I'm kind of building everything around it. <laughs> boob weight is, or hair weight on boob, uh, whatever this is, <laughs> top. <laughs> really spoke to me this time, so we are kind of going with that. Lone Survivor, thank you for the follow, welcome. When will it all appear on the Divinica webpage? Um, Philip, once the Kickstarter is fulfilled. Um, so, well, the Genesis books, we once everyone gets them, we'll probably be able to start putting them up because we do have um, those were limited quantity books, but not all of them sold out in the backer kit. So yes, we'll be able to have the Genesis books pretty quickly. I just need to check with JP Roth on when exactly. Um, and then once the art books have all been fulfilled. So we need to wait for the Kickstarter to be fulfilled first, and then we can start making them available to everyone. Wait, what? Oh, Juan, the, um, the ship that is carrying all of our Divinica goodies has docked at Long Beach. So now we just need to wait for it to get through um, the unloading process. 
As far as I know, our books are going to actually go through customs in Chicago, which is where our warehouse is. So after they are, uh, they are removed from the boat, I don't know what that's called, um, then they will go onto a train and the train will take them to Chicago. They will go through customs and then they will be dropped off at um, our warehouse. And then the fun fulfilling begins. So this is where I start figuring out my, um, my actual lines. And when I'm doing a sketch, of course, there's so many lines. So I'm just going to pick the line. <laughs> Shirley, hello. <clears throat> Happy Thanksgiving, Jeff. <laughs> As Dawn said this morning, I'm so glad nothing went wrong and it didn't get stuck in the Nile or whatever. True. <laughs> Oh, that's so awesome, Freaky Deek. I do also, um, I draw traditionally. I uh, work on a comic book series called Divinica and that is done traditionally, but I do sometimes digitally color covers. It depends on the project, but it's great to have you here. Timothy Brown, I'm doing great. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. It's October here in California. It's October here in uh, Canada too. <laughs> but um, we do have um, our Thanksgiving a little earlier in the year. All right, I need to just measure the width of her face. To remove it from this really quickly. I need to measure the width of her face. Two centimeters and one, two centimeters. Okay, so I just need to pull it in a little bit right here. There we go. Who we got in tonight's game for 300? The Buffalo Bills or the Kansas City Chiefs? Oh no, I'm so sorry that you lost money on Thursday. Weep! What size is the artwork? This is the, um, this is a comic book blank. So it's the size of a comic book. So that's like, Almost seven inches by 10 something. I didn't go to, to New York Comic Con, no. Maybe I'll try to sign up for next year.
It looks small on the screen. <laughs> yeah, well, um, usually I'm working with much bigger paper, that's for sure. Yes, four boxes of stuffing. I'm so happy, and I like the boxed stuffing. I do, before anybody gets on my case, I do, yes, know how to make homemade stuffing, but I prefer the box stuff that costs 75 cents. <laughs> is this DC or Marvel? No, this is Lady Death, or Lady Death. Um, she's a character by Coffin Comics. And I'm trying to give Lady Death some pretty intense hips. So this is intentional hippage. <laughs> Homemade stuffing ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, that's also true. You might need to lay a ruler next to the art. Good point. All right, so this is a ruler in centimeters. I'll uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to use one with inches and centimeters on it. Here we go. Okay, so I'll do the inches side. So this is 10 and a quarter inches, more or less. I'll turn this. 10 and a quarter inches by around six and a half. Thank you, Freaky Deek. Reminds me a little of Gen 13 or Heavy Metal. That means a lot. Uh, Gen 13 was really the comic book that got me into comics. And I found J. Scott Campbell. He's the artist for Gen 13. Um, and then from there, you know, I found many other artists. And definitely Gen 13 played a massive role in my becoming a comic book artist. So I'm glad you noticed that. Uh, do we do turkey or chicken for Thanksgiving? I I am a, I prefer the taste of chicken to turkey, honestly. So sometimes we'll actually cook a big old turkey, but meh, we just get a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> we don't we don't really care, <laughs> so it doesn't seem to matter. All right, outfit for Lady Death, Angel of Death. What should I do? While I'm thinking about that, I will be working on some of her hair curls.
Uh, this is closed. <laughs> Basically, this is the commission size the customer paid for instead of a good old 11 by 17. Um, this is a actual personal blank made for this collector by Coffin Comics. So on the back of the book, it actually has her name on it. Um, so that's what this one is actually. Karen, hello, welcome to the stream. All right, so here is what I have so far, Karen. So this is for Karen. She is now on Twitch. Yay. All right. Sorry, the lines are really light right now, Karen. Um, but the wings will be all fluffy and wrapping around her once I get her body worked out. So I'm doing that first. Karen, Dan had a question. Is this a naughty cover or a uh, fully clothed? I assumed it was fully clothed, but, you know, um, Lady Death doesn't do fully topless, but you know, the sheer. So let me know. Homemade is for Thanksgiving and Christmas boxed is for the roulades or other stuffing appropriate meals. What is roulades? Definitely need to revisit. Oh man. Yeah. Gen 13 is the best. All right, so I'm just waiting for Karen's response on that. If this is a naughty cover or a um, regular situation. Does the, does the, everything seem clothed? Okay, clothed it is. Does it seem a little too dark for everyone? I can always, um, I can always lighten up the, the lighting on this, but then what, um, what will happen is that all of my little sketch lines will probably get blown out. Thank you, Karen. It's a fun one. <laughs> I'm excited. I mean, I'm thinking about the clothes though, though, and that's kind of where I'm at right now is deciding what she's going to be wearing. So her hair is gonna be all curly and flowing about. Oh, rule odds. All right, I'm going to take a look at what these rule odds are. Oh, interesting. Okay. Huh, I've never had that before. No, Lady Death does not do full nude as far as the publisher rules. Okay, so I have to draw her arm through the scythe. Even though the scythe is gonna go in front of her arm, I still need to know where her arm is and all of that. So the scythe is gonna be going here, but I'm still drawing her arm because otherwise it's just so easy to like 
get the elbow bend in the wrong place or something like that. So I'm drawing it through. I absolutely think that black fe feathered wings make sense for an angel of death. And even if they don't, who cares? This is art. Art! <laughs> I have shared this with my art group. Thank you, Lee Anthony. I appreciate that so much. time no see love welcome to the stream today Lucifer is portrayed with both black and white wings. Azrael, the actual angel of death, does have black wings. Excellent. Thank you, Devin. You can thank the cold weather. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, it's snowing today. At least it was here for us in the afternoon. this because it's a full well three quarter to full body commission and i have to fit all the wings in here the face is so tiny um so i really have to um use my thinnest i'm gonna have to use my thinnest pens in order to get this in there correctly Okay, so the thing that really helps with making um, one leg look like it's in front of the other is the garters that she wears because, or the thigh highs. That makes such a difference and really helps bring that, make that clear right there. Otherwise, it's just like, what is going on? <laughs> it rained, snowed, hailed, windstormed, and was sunny all in a few hours. That was in my area of work. Wow. Okay, 
So I'm going to, I'm thinking to put a skull right here. Jin, hello. That is totally fine, Freaky Deek. 100%. You do not have to be talking the entire time. Lurking is absolutely acceptable. And I do hope you get some sleep, especially if you have to get to work or school tomorrow morning. Go to bed. <laughs> All right, I'm happy with the, the general situation we have going on right now, but I would like to put um, a little bit more of a detailed outfit now that I've got kind of the basics. So the basics with Lady Death are, you know, she has uh, the whole long gloves, garter, thigh highs, and, you know, then bra and panties. So that is the... the skeleton of the lady death outfit um, and then if I play within that general uh, range I'm given a lot of freedom by coffin comics to kind of design within that framework whatever I would like which is super fun um, so I um, I'm gonna start trying to work on adding in those additional items now. I think I'm going to make them a little bit lower. I often don't have the energy to be super catchy in streams. Well, for sure, this is the time to chill. See if this will work. Mm. Well, I think I need to move her elbow down a little bit more. Yes, I do, which is great. Oh no, that elbow's up higher. Never mind. I mean, that shoulder is up higher. 
Yeah, but still. Okay, so it's supposed to be in line with the belly button. Yeah, so I need to move this down just a slight bit, which is awesome. There we go. Don't know if I might need to move that eye up a little bit more. I think that I do. Where's my ruler? Yes, I do. There we go. I just have a few little lines in here to make sure I'm putting everything in the right place. Now, most of the eye isn't going to be seen because it's going to be covered by hair, but even so, I need to I need to make sure that I've got it you know, any eyebrow portions that we do see are in the right place. There we go. Loomis method for drawing. Um, I'm not sure, Ava. Um, I think so. I do follow and read a lot of stuff from Loomis. That is for sure. Has been a method that helps me map out the face. Oh yeah, the Loomis uh, everything. Yeah, everything that Loomis explains is just so good. Um, I would say that you know just the lines of mapping out the face is probably very common, not just Loomis. So I'm not sure if I'm like perfectly following him right now, but that's so awesome that you're studying him because so helpful, so good. Hello, Christian. I'm doing great. How are you? Thank you, Ava. Much appreciated. I'm using the cuts that I'm doing and all the different little straps that I'm giving Lady Death to mimic her rib cage. And this is a trick that I learned from Ebass, and it's that 
you know, when you're creating an outfit or something, try as much as possible to follow the anatomy or the skeletal structure or muscular st structure and the direction that they go. Um, follow that in the clothing. So here I'm kind of following the end lines of her rib cage and then these other lines that I'm putting in that are going to be black straps of um, material are um, almost following her rib cage bones and so that will just kind of like your eye will accept it and it sort of fits with the body a little bit better. <clears throat> And I'll put a little skull right there and a skull right there. I'm still deciding if I like this kind of crisscross in front of her. <laughs> Thank you, Ava. Um, Christian, I won't be going to C2E2. I'm going to go to Emerald City. I'm sorry. What do I enjoy drawing most? Uh, I work on a, interiors for a series called Divinica, and it's about goddesses from all different pantheons of mythology. So that is really what I'm enjoying most because I'm learning to uh, use different paint mediums and stuff, and because it's something I'm creating with my friend J.P. Roth. Um, but I do enjoy working on all the different characters that I get to draw. Um, will it be woven together or are the straps individual with skin showing? Um, yeah, they're going to be individual with skin showing. So I'm just trying to decide if I like this kind of belt situation that would then go into her garters, maybe with like some little skull situations in a few different places. I don't know. Um, M M O R P G. <clears throat> it's a series called Divinica. <laughs> you really don't need to fix my ring, Christian. It's actually not causing me the slightest amount of issues, so I have no problem with my ring. It's so sweet of you to remember that, though. Div Divinica, so I'll write it out. Oh, there we go. Devin just gave you the link, um, Ava. Oh, sorry, Chrissy. It would have been great to see you there, but I totally get it if the timing doesn't work. Oh, thank you, Ava. Eva, I promise you, I have to erase and redraw many, many, many times as well. Um, especially working on a very specified size. Oh, so please know um, I do a lot of erasing. You'll see that plenty if you stick around and hang out with me at other live streams. Sometimes it's quite a travesty. I, I'm very encouraging to a, a, other artists because they see that sometimes it can be a bit, bit of a shit show. <laughs> Stefan Old, welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. Oh, you're so sweet, Devin. Thank you.
you know what honestly just for something different i'm not hating this um i'm not hating the crisscross thing it's different um i actually started laying out an idea like this for another lady death cover um and then it was the lady death queen Yes, Lady Death Queen cover. I don't know if you guys remember, but I did have some sort of crisscross situation, but then I didn't use it. I decided not to, but let me see. I'm looking through my, my photos because I think I took a picture of it and then erased it. So I was like, I'll just chalk that idea away for another day. <laughs> Hold, please. I have a lot of photos in my phone. <laughs> Every so often, Dan takes my phone and like downloads all the photos and cleans out my phone but I haven't done that in a while okay scrolling scrolling what now I'm in lady death empress but I did queen after empress right Oh, here we go. Okay. Interesting. So I crisscrossed it and then brought it. I did crisscross and then brought it to the front. Yeah, but that's a little bit too much like chaps. I'm not trying to do chaps, which is probably why I got rid of it. Little Jelly, thank you for the follow. I'm trying to get proportions, made one of my drawings like a tiny head and a massive body. Yes, we live and learn. I feel your pain. It happens to everyone. Don't worry. <laughs> Unnamed Knight, hello. <laughs> I know, I'm so spoiled, Juan. See, if I did it like this and I just had the garter thing right here and right here and then there's just kind of this hip hugging situation there's just some I don't know I'm I'm gonna leave it and just keep thinking but right now I mean I'm interested in it just because it's I haven't seen this before on a lady death or anywhere and I want to try to like actually do little indentations so that she doesn't look like she's a mannequin but she looks like she's got some chonk on those hips. Oh thank you Ava. I understand it's a big question, but have you ever felt I should not even hold a pen? I'm not good enough to draw. And if so, what did you do to build self-esteem again and keep going? Ah, oh, Geek Potion. I'm so sorry if you're feeling that way. That sucks so hard. Yes, I have felt that way. Um, more than once. And basically the thing that I had to realize is that all those kind of feelings is what my brain does. I definitely think worst case scenario about my art. I feel like I should just give up. Oh my God, I'm not gonna hold pencils again. I have thrown them away. Um, and the thing that helped me honestly is just putting one foot in front of the other. It's not like I can go from feeling like absolute horseshit and then decide, oh, okay, I'm fine. I'm gonna keep drawing. It's just, you just keep drawing anyway. The fact that I have deadlines probably helps me not um, stay in those modes forever. Even if I feel that way, I've got a deadline. So it's kind of like, well, boo fucking who, Dawn, you've got to draw anyway. Um, and that helps. <laughs> um, in a situation where you're feeling that way, or I'm assuming you might be, um, just keep working at it you know it's probably something isn't working right for you right now and that's what's causing the discouragement if you can maybe switch to something else you know if you're struggling with a drawing go do some coloring 
get a coloring book so it's not even your own work but you're creating and so then you're not tempted to critique it you're just enjoying it for what it is um, maybe that would help or if anyone else has any suggestions of ways to sort of get over that artistic discouragement slash depression um, this is definitely a safe place for that kind of feeling um, I get it as well <laughs> Joanne, hello. Mr. E and Kylie, welcome both of you. This is such a treat. It's always so easy to detect, attack a creative expression, especially from people that do not create anything themselves. It's only important that you enjoy what you're doing. Also for me learning, I try to redraw sketches every few months. Oh, that's a good idea. I need to rotate this one down a little bit more. But yeah, I want to give the like little poochy bits, you know? Like the panties are just slightly too tight. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Three to four days, almost crying, just starting staring at my tablet. It feels almost like I'm going backward in my development instead of forward. Geek Potion, I'm so sorry. Um, there's something, I really need to find the video and find the um, artist that was talking about it. But this really, really helped me in the feeling that you're going behind. Like that you're getting worse, not better. <clears throat> I would venture to say you're not getting worse. What's happening is that there are two sides to the creative process, right? And the way that this artist explained it was so much better and I need to find her. But what it was is, think of it like this. There is your drawing side of art and then there is your analytical and mind side of it, right? And it's rare that, you know, your, your mind and your um, hand creativity and ability are at the same level. So if you feel like you're getting worse, it's probably just that your ability to notice error, to find um, something wrong with your work, to all of those things, you're probably just progressing a little bit faster right now with your ability to um, catch mistakes, your critical thinking as far as art. You've just had a little bit of a critical thinking surge so you're getting better. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to pull up your artistic hand ability to that spot because you're not going to look at something that looks completely wrong and be like, I'm, I'm a boss, I rule, this is fantastic. Your, your mind and I are going to know, no, this is wrong, that's wrong, I need to fix this, that, or the other. And so then your hand is going to start fixing those things and you'll start catching up. And it's a sign of progress, but it's very discouraging. So just stick through this. Your hand will catch up to that mental critical thinking ability and then you'll be good. And then it'll vary again. And it's like, it's never at a point where you're kind of aligned. There's always something a little bit off, you know, and... <laughs> it's really frustrating, but it is the thing that's pulling you progressively higher and higher in your skill. And backed by science, the left side of the brain used for logic, language, analytical thinking can be at odds with the creative right side. Always improving on something, that's right. Megas, hello! Okay, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit behind. I've always have a personal project on the side. Yeah, that's so true, Freaky Deek. All right, I think I'm caught up. <clears throat> if I missed anybody, you know, just let me know. Karen, uh, are you here? I thought I saw that Karen is still here.
Oh, okay. Karen is still here. All right. So usually I don't um, I don't ask questions of the the uh, person I'm doing a commission for because I'm so like <laughs> my idea is my idea and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> but as far as the outfit goes, um, how do you feel about this crisscross thing? Because I know I am taking a little bit of a creative risk here. Um, and if you're not really super into it, I can just as well leave it. <laughs> you still have my address. I love you, Kylie. <laughs> I don't know if this is relevant, but I didn't know how to apply makeup growing up. I watched YouTube tutorials and just kept doing the same basic looks until it looked much better. That's right. It just might be too much information, you know, like maybe with the wings coming in and, you know, her hair and the scythe and everything, this might be better to just not. So Karen likes the straps. Kylie votes for the straps. Ava votes for the straps. Okay, so we have some people liking on this. All right, well, I'm not going to ink it just yet. This is where I leave it see how I feel in about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Straps are always a plus. Happiness. Maybe I won't put the ones coming down. Like I'm always, I go back and forth when I'm working on Lady Death covers, whether I'm gonna have the garter connection or not. A lot of times I don't do it because it cuts the body weird sometimes. It really depends on the pose. Here, it kind of works, but you know, you can have garter straps here. You can have them on the side, blah, 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 blah. So I may just pretend they're not, they're on the side. I don't know, but those are a possible maybe. My art teacher taught us to do five to 10 minute drawings with the left hand before drawing your art to switch the thinking out of the analytical side of the brain. Doesn't have to be good, just do it to get out of the negative thinking. That's fascinating, Andrew Law. I've never heard that one before. I'm gonna try that as well, because when I switch to the other hand, I'll feel so fancy. <laughs> Magus, or Magus, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name correctly. I have a Cintiq 22 HD, so that's what I use for digital coloring. Um, sometimes I'll, a lot of times, I will take my little rough pencil layouts, like I'll show you some. They're very, very bad. And I'll, I'll scan them and move them into the computer. I think I have some layouts here. Um, yeah, so these are page layouts. This is what my page layouts look like. <laughs> and then from here, I will pull them into the computer and do kind of a blown up situation. Like that is a layout. And then now that is on a bigger page. Aw, thank you, Ava. It is my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much though. Yeah, okay, well, I like this just for the little bumpy bits because it makes her look like, you know, she's got squishable bottom. <laughs> and I definitely want to do the squishable bottom situation. I don't know that I wanna do this though. I think that there's enough cutting up the body that that is just one thing too many, but that remains to be seen. <laughs> Squishy bottoms. I've got a Wacom Studio Pro. Yeah, they're so good. You know what? I have been using Wacoms for 20, 24 years, 20 years, something like that. I've never had one break on me. I've literally just wanted to upgrade because I wanted the new shiny toy. I've never actually experienced a broken Wacom in my life. <laughs> You're on like year three. That's still awesome. 
Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of wanting to do the the little squishy bits. I mean, that's what everybody's got. If you're you know if you're sporting a, a, a hippage like this, there's gonna be some squish. <laughs> I'm trying to find the best fit myself. Worked with a 5B for sketching and HB for co committing the lines of the sketch. 5B. That's very dark. Are you, like, does that get a lot of smoosh on your page? I've broken a Wacom pin before, but not the tablet. <laughs> That's Eric's porn name. Nice. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> happiness. We are good with all of this. Now um, I'm going to move on. Ooh, she needs her hair down here. Never mind. Okay, wings. We have been requested. I'm using the royal we right now. <laughs> Vanishing Dragon and Ava, thank you both for the follows. Um, okay. We are um, doing the fluffy wings, but my plan for the base of the wings. So I'm going to make these really long and it's going to be fluffy up until about hip point. And then it's going to go into long, think like swirling feathers that almost appear like smoke or strips of ribbon or something like that. So it's going to go all kind of smoky wings at the bottom. And then there's going to be f flicks of particles flying around and then mostly in black. And then I'm going to splatter the fuck out of it with gold. Shadow wings. That's right. At the bottom. But the top is going to be your typical fluffy wings that honestly are so much easier to do with a palette knife and oil paint. <laughs> but... This will not work for that. Yeah, Ava, it, regularly, I use HB across the board. So it's entirely up to you. R know the rules, break the rules, screw the rules, right? But I think that for helping you as far as sketching so that you can work loosely and you're not worried about so much graphite getting on your paper, I would swing more to the H side. So B is the softer leads, H is the harder leads. So HB is kind of right smack dab in the middle, so that's what I generally use. Um, but a lot of people will work with the H pens and pencils, H pencils, um, for their sketching. Um, so you can consider that if you want to, but you know, when it comes to art, I'm always a little hesitant to like make suggestions because I don't want anybody to feel like I'm telling you what to do. I hate being told what to do. I'm absolutely not telling you what to do. <laughs> yeah, I would switch to, uh, H for that. And then the, like Kylie said, um, B's are good for shading, for rendering, um, if you want, uh, say, a really uh, dark area, go to the Bs. If you're just trying to sketch, I would stick with Hs. Yeah, same here. Just HB. It's right smack dab down the middle. There's no issues either way. <laughs> I love my HB. So I actually use, for sketching, I use a 0 0.9 uh, mechanical pencil HB lead. And then for my rendering and, you know, tighter lines, I use a 0 0.3 millimeter pencil HB lead. Rules are guidelines, law, laws are binding, break the rules, follow the law. <laughs> nice, Devin. <clears throat> okay. Fluffy wings. It is fluffy wing time. Now, they're black wings. I'm going to have to be a little bit cautious right here because I do not want to cover Brian Polito's signature and the Lady Death title. So I'm probably actually going to shorten the top of the wings a little bit because I don't want to fuck with that. Okay. 
Ugh, erasing on this side of the cover is so difficult. You thought the graphite fallout was part of drawing. <laughs> That's also okay though. You know, so many people love using the graphite fallout and shading with it. It just really depends on what you're trying to do. Okay, so I'm shortening her wings a little bit. They will attach. We're just gonna pretend that this is the back of her collarbone, so let's just, or her shoulder blades, sorry. Shoulder blades back here, and we're going to just get the wings going up, and yeah, all right. So they just need to look like they're connecting lower, and then I can turn them here and have them curve to the front a little bit more drastically so that we miss that point. And also, I think it's really going to help that the scythe can stick out a little bit further. Um, so I'm going to straighten this out and get myself just a little line so that I get them even. Okay, so we're going to go to the top of the wing, make sure this is straight. So that's the, the, where the top of the wing goes. And I think I might have to straighten this out a little bit more, like so. Because the wing needs to curl forward. And the side is kind of in my way. So let me measure how far away this is. Four centimeters okay so four centimeters what it's four centimeters from the center of it wow okay so I'm way off over here so four centimeters from the center line of her face is right here well yikes weird Steve, hello, welcome to the stream today. In my dreams I can draw similar. Aw, thank you. That means so much, Ava. Depends on what you want your end product to be. If you're planning on adding color, going below HB would not be my first choice. I'd rather use a black coloring pencil. mechanical pencil how did you get oh just very light pressure um because there's i don't know if karen is planning on grading this book karen are you planning on grading this <laughs> um so there's something with comic book blanks ava where the books will go to a grading company and if it goes to a grading company they actually look at it under a microscope and decide if the book has any damage and if it has damage, usually you have an unhappy collector with the artist. Um, so I have to be very careful to actually draw on this thing without actually looking like I drew on it. So that's what this is for. I'm actually using a commissioner bridge so that I'm not putting any pressure on the paper, but sometimes I have to, so. James, hello, welcome to the stream. Dawn's death grip on the pencil belies how, <laughs> yes, I'm a pincher, not a pusher. There are pushers and there are pinchers. So I am not a pusher. I don't press hard on the paper, but I pinch the living fucking daylights out of my pencil. <laughs> Creates a lot of hand and arm pain. Don, yeah, the death grip. Shout out to Jeff. That's right. So Bridge Your Art is where I get my bridge supplies from. Um, and this hovers over the book without causing any pressure or damage to the book. 
Garnot, hello, welcome to the stream. Not at the moment. Okay, well, that's fantastic news, Karen. It takes some of the stress out because, uh, yeah, the wings are going to go all the way to the spine, and that's, that's problematic for sure. Yeah, I'm going to move. I'm going to move the scythe a little bit more and have it resting inside the wings a little bit. Oh, you're so sweet, Ava. Yes, I get a lot of like neck and hand pain. But I mean, that's just what happens in art, you know? So I'm fine with it. Okay. Wings is growing down like this. Her hair is going to kind of break that up. So that's why I've got her hair kind of flowing all around her because it'll help her kind of stand out from this kind of cocoon of black that she's going to be in. <laughs> He paints miniatures and complains about neck pain. I tell him not to hunch his neck so much, but you know, oh yeah, for sure. It's tough. Ooh, I have some people to thank. Grail Crew Customs and Secret Life of Petter and Kevin Nutter. Thank you all so much for the follows. And if I've completely messed up your names, I apologize. Okay, so this goes to about here. This goes to about here. And the reason why I kind of want them curling forward is I do want them to... Um, I want us to be able to see like the side profile of the wings and one of the art notes was that they're they're kind of enveloping her so they're going to envelop her all along here in this area and then they're going to start going out into smoke. I just want a nice, softly relaxed hand down here. And then her legs will just sort of disappear into the background, like so. Oh, you guys can't even see what I'm doing. Zane, did I already say hi to you? If not, apologies and welcome to the stream. Oh my god, and you joined the stream <clears throat> talking about how much I apologize and I said apologies. Shit.
Thank you, James. And these two, how they meet up. Ah, oh, thank you, Megas. Timothy Brown, hello and thank you. Much appreciated. All right, so I'm just drawing in her fingers here. They're just gonna be kind of relaxed. Nothing really going on. Kind of just resting there on her hip situation. Mark, hello. Welcome to the stream today. Okay, so I'm having some trouble here because it's creating an odd circle situation, but maybe like I'm okay with that. So I'm trying to decide, am I okay with it or not? Or maybe I just kind of move the side and I mean, no matter how you do it, it's gonna enclose this area. <laughs> well, you know, I just I've gotta I've gotta keep in mind, yeah, I know, to noodle or to noodle more. <laughs> This is why I need, I need to just kind of make decisions, you know, and I have a really hard time. When circles no longer work, well, I have too good of a circle here and I don't know how I feel about that. Like, maybe I like it. So I'm just thinking, <laughs> guys, it's giving me a hard time. I would like to uh, uncircle the circle. So somehow, I guess I just need to turn yeah, I'm gonna turn the scythe and it's gonna go back. And so that's difficult for me. I have a hard time like, you know, just fucking making the scythe just go back, but that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna go, so we're going to put this at a pretty intense angle and it's gonna go back. No, 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 not like that. Trying again. Just don't want an enclosed situation here. Maybe I did it. And I have. I see it. Noodle more, swish something in it, like maybe some strands of hair. Well, I was thinking to put like some black tied ribbon or something. <laughs> yeah. That's what I plan to do is like have some ribbon or something coming from it. I'm gonna have to be careful here. Racing close to the spine, always problematic. Have I thought about putting the blade forward? Honestly, I have, but I don't really wanna like cover her face and stuff. And so it's much easier to like put that behind her head as opposed to in front. Generally, you know, she's the, she's the main character. The scythe is literally a prop. So I don't really want to make it too much of a focal point. Every time I need to do a scythe, I'm like, ah, fuck. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think the Blade is kind of a secondary character, so um, I'm not really trying to kind of make it super important to the scene. <gasps> I think I would have the handle in front of the wing. Cool. All right, good. Okay, so I'm gonna start inking her now. Um, the wings I'm probably gonna handle mostly in Copic marker, so I'm not really too worried um, about getting the wings in fully in line art because honestly I mm, I almost wonder if I should Copic the wings first and then do her body because I don't really want inked lines for the wings and then I'm just going to go in and put black over them like it's, it's pointless and a waste of time. Ah, oh, thank you Ava. Have a wonderful week Stanley. Much love to you. Yes. So I think I'm gonna go get my Copic markers right now. One moment, please. So I'm gonna start with like a rough, a rough outline sketch of the, um, of the wings. And I'm going to be using toner gray Copic markers. So these are the T, the T range. Jay Satori, hello. Ooh, I'm not familiar with the Magic the Gathering card. Okay. Yes, it's okay to post links for sure. I'm doing great, Jay. How are you? Oh, I need my dab pads. Where are my dab pads? Go. All right, moment of truth. Here we go. I'm going to just start putting in the wings because I feel like the wings are kind of going to be in the foreground and that's going to help me know what else I'm going to be doing. I need to <sighs> Will Sherlock be putting his paw print? Boy, I hope not, Philip. Panic mode game watching. Oh no, what happened? No, you may not. 
All right. Uh, I was going to start with T5, but I think I'm going to start with T3 um, and work up. I'm not going to do the background, like what's behind her hair with the wings, but I'm going to do the foreground wings now. <gasps> Ooh, spooky, spooky. Hello, Vipe VR. Welcome to the stream today. So this is the fluffiness at the top. Um, bet you anything, this is not the smack dab center of the cover, 8.2. It's not actually too far off. Good, I'll just stay away from the complete edge. Matthew, hello, welcome to the stream. Oh, cool. That is very awesome, Ava. Yeah, so fluffy wings was definitely part of the art notes here. So having some wings in the foreground. So right now I'm just using a light gray because it's going to, you know, just basically work as a sketch. So they're coming forward, so there would be little bit more here in the foreground and the wings are a little bit uh, shorter and softer up at the top and then they start getting um, longer and less fluffy as they go further down. I just have my rough layout that I'm looking at. So now I need to bring down, I had one planned, so like going right over her thigh like this. Again, bear in mind, this is just the basically wing sketch. From here, I'll start moving into actually putting in um, the wing color and all of that. But then down here, they're going to turn into smoke and splatter. 
and just soft lines. I've just got some rough sketchy lines there too and then I'm going to work on the next wing on the other side and then do the inking of her body because then I know where to put ink and where to not put ink because I don't really want uh, her body lines showing through the wing lines if that makes sense. Okay here we're doing the exact same thing. We've got fluffy wing pieces coming forward. Perfect. It stops right under Brian Polito's name. Don't want to be covering his signature. hoping Kylie I hope so um I'm going to I don't know ah, I keep going back and forth I might switch to my just regular art board And the, the handy part is that I'm going to have the tips of her wings all done with like dry brush stroke, stroke gold. Um, so it's going to A, give them a lot of texture and B, because it's gold tipped, it'll show up over any parts like here, it's going to be black on black. So how can I handle that? Gold! <laughs> Amazing seeing her process. Oh, thank you, Viper. Okay, just one more. So one uh, part of the commission said the wings enveloping her, right? So curling forward. So that's why I've got them covering her body just in places that aren't really all that important. You know, like nobody's got a like inner arm elbow fetish that I'm aware of, right? So nobody cares. So I'll cover it right there. I'll cover right here. Just parts that aren't like super duper important. I don't know if I want to cut cover the babam part of her hip. That might that might be a problem. <laughs> 